Hello, and welcome to Delivering Miracles, a podcast to give moms like you strategies and tips to have a safer pregnancy so you can bring home a healthy baby. I'm your host and your high-risk pregnancy expert, Parija Deshpande. Welcome to the Delivering Miracles podcast, where we help moms with high-risk pregnancies have healthy babies. I'm Parijat Deshpande, your high-risk pregnancy expert, and I'm so happy to be here with you today. Today, we're going to shake things up a little bit during this episode. My job is to work with women like you who have a high-risk pregnancy, and I'll be honest, it can be really heavy at times, and we can end up talking about a lot of dark stuff, and you know this all too well because you're living with that heaviness every day. But the number one thing that I'm asked from moms who work with me and my clients, and even what I wanted when I was going through my high-risk pregnancy, was give me hope. Where's that hope? So while my job is to help you have a healthier pregnancy so you can have a healthy baby, a big part of that includes bringing that hope and that light to what you're going through. Because there is hope with a high-risk pregnancy. There's so much hope. And I don't want you to lose sight of that. So today I'm going to share with you three client stories that are filled with hope. These stories that I'm going to share, I've changed the details about them, including the names to protect my client's privacy, but I've maintained the integrity of the story so you can be as moved and as touched as I was working with these wonderful women. Mariah came to me When she was about 20 weeks pregnant, she had already been through several miscarriages. She had an awful history of loss and infertility, and she had really been through the ringer. So 20 weeks was the farthest that she had ever been in her pregnancy. She said she found me online. I can't remember if it was Twitter or Instagram, but one of the two. And she found me because she was desperate for some hope and she wanted to know that something was going to work out she was already on bed rest she was already having contractions and she told me she couldn't stop crying and she just wanted to bring this baby home and she didn't know what she could do now no one can tell you what's going to happen during your pregnancy but when you've been through so much like mariah had experiencing loss, experiencing failed cycles and uncertainty, you just, you want to know that there's some glimmer of hope. There's some light at the end of this very, very dark tunnel. And even though you know that nobody can actually tell you for sure what's going to happen, you just need to feel that light in you. And that's why Mariah contacted me. We worked together for several weeks and she was just wonderful because she was so determined and she was so ready to do whatever it is that I shared with her or whatever it is that I taught her because she just so desperately wanted to bring this baby home. She had an amazing imagination. In fact, professionally, she had a very creative job that required her to use her imagination frequently. So one thing that worked really well with her was helping her to visualize positive outcomes. Now, I know for some women that can be really scary because you don't want to imagine something that may or may not happen. In fact, for some, they even feel like that's jinxing their situation, that if I imagine too many positive things... They may not happen. I may have impacted the result. I may have jinxed my future by being happy too soon. But that isn't actually the case. And I worked with Mariah on that. And she was really in agreement with that. That what she needed more than anything, instead of the fear of jinxing her future was she needed positivity and happiness and hope right now. So we've spent a lot of our time visualizing positive outcomes. And it's not just, let's imagine you're bringing this baby home and then that's it. 
It was so much deeper than that. We would go into the details of it. What are you looking forward to? How do you imagine bringing your baby home? Down to what does the car seat look like? What is she? What is she wearing? She was she was um pregnant with a little girl. So what is she wearing? What does she look like? How do you hold her? How does your husband hold her? Where in the house is she? Really delving into the details of that. Because this isn't about just making Mariah feel better. This is about her having hope so she feels more in control, less helpless, so that she cries less, so she improves her mood, so her anxiety is calmer, so she sleeps better. And all of these things impact your pregnancy. They impact your baby and your baby's growth. It also helped her reduce her preterm contractions. I remember one session when we got ready to jump on the session. I do video sessions so I can see my clients and they can see me. And as soon as we logged on, she had this huge smile on her face. She goes, Barajeth, you won't believe it. I haven't had a contraction in like six hours, which is a long time for her given what she was going through. Because all of this works. Your mindset, your mood, your anxiety, and how much hope you have translates into your body. And for her, it translated into less contractions. It was an amazing, amazing session. I'll never forget it. Her doctor believed that she would deliver around 28 weeks or so, given everything she had been through in her history with miscarriages and how early she was having her contractions. He really didn't think she would make it past 28 weeks. But with our work together and her determination to keep her mood up, her anxiety low, and to really hold on to that hope, she stayed pregnant until she was 38 weeks along. I remember getting the picture of her and her little girl and I literally had tears in my eyes when I saw it because I know how hard she fought for that baby and that moment. And the best part about it, she sent me a picture of her little girl wearing the exact outfit that she had described and visualized during our work together. It was amazing. The thing to take away from Mariah's story that I want you to really hold on to is that it's important to recognize when you need some support because recognizing it and then reaching out and receiving it, that's what translates into a healthier pregnancy. There is hope during a high-risk pregnancy. It's really there, even on your darkest days. The second client I want to tell you about is Kim. I love her so much. I mean, I love all my clients. I really do. But Kim, she's one of those women who I will remember for the rest of my life. I think about her all the time, even now, even though it's been so many months. It might have even been over a year since I worked with her. But she is, oh gosh, she's such a lovely woman. She had been pregnant once before. And she delivered that baby at 22 weeks and lost that baby because it was obviously too early for the baby to survive. And it was devastating for her, as you can imagine. So when she contacted me, she was already in the hospital, on hospital bed rest for her second baby. And she was somewhere around, I want to say, 22 weeks pregnant already. And things were not going well as you can imagine, because she was already on hospital bed rest, her doctors were convinced she was going to lose this baby the same way that she lost her first one. And they didn't have any hope. They were just acting as if it was over. They weren't really giving her a lot of medications. They weren't really prioritizing interventions for her, uh, even though they were following through with her requests. But essentially, the doctors and a lot of the nurses were bracing the the team and her and her family that she was going to lose this one too. And she, when she contacted me, she was desperate. She wanted to bring this baby home. The wounds of losing her first baby were so real and so raw still. And I could hear in her sobs that she just wanted to do anything and everything she could to, to bring this one home. She'd already read a bunch of my stuff 
that I share on social media and through my blog. And she knew that there were things that she could do to improve her chances of staying pregnant longer than her doctor thought was possible. And she wanted to learn what that was. So we worked on her anxiety because her anxiety was through the roof. You know, she was reliving all of these memories of when she lost her first baby, being pregnant, the delivery, that whole experience of being in the hospital. It was very traumatizing for her and her anxiety was extremely high. So through our video sessions, we worked a lot on listening to her body. We did a lot of body work with her. So we focused on where in her body she was holding her anxiety, how it translated to get her attention. For example, she would have back aches in a very particular part of her back and like the middle to lower part of her back, kind of where you have that, um, the curvature of your spine. That's in that one particular spot is where it would hurt when she noticed her anxiety was getting higher. She also noticed every time she got anxious, she would have contractions, which is something so many moms experience. I experienced it too. Every time my stress went high, I had more contractions and the nurses would come running in going, what's going on? Are you okay? It was so closely tied to my mood and my anxiety levels. And the same thing was happening to Kim. So I taught her several different exercises that were involved with her body to help relieve the tension in her body, which then translated to less contractions. One in particular that I love teaching that I taught to Kim also was to pretend that you're floating. Because if you think about it, when you're floating in a pool, you can't have tension in your body, right? You have to be at your most relaxed physically. Otherwise, you sink to the bottom of the pool, right? So I had her lie in her bed, even though it was massively uncomfortable. And she was actually even lying with her feet above her head, which I personally know that position Trendelenburg is super, super awful and really uncomfortable. But I had her practice floating every single day, three times a day. And also whenever she noticed her contractions getting higher. So she'd get into a position on her bed that was as comfortable as possible. She'd close her eyes and really visualize in detail what it would feel like to be in a pool right now and let her body respond to that visualization as if she was floating. And what that did was, as you can imagine, it lowered her contractions because the anxiety came down, the body tension came down. It was amazing. And so every day since we had started working together, she'd send me an email and it would say in the subject line, it was so cute. I made it another day, exclamation, exclamation. And she would just describe how the, the evening went or what happened that morning. And there was so much hope restored in her message and in her attitude and the way she was perceiving her pregnancy. She delivered at 27 weeks, which was a whole month past how far she thought her doctor thought that she would stay pregnant and when she would deliver. A whole month she got. And 27 weeks? A lot of babies survive at 27 weeks. It's a hard road. It's a long road in the NICU, absolutely. But her baby survived. And she sent me a picture too on the day of her NICU graduation when she was getting ready to go home. And oh my God, if you can just picture the Pillsbury Doughboy as a baby and just how squishy and chubby and the big cheeks and oh my gosh, I will never forget that picture. She, her daughter was so, so cute. And she said, I remember that, that final email, that she was so glad to have worked with me because she wouldn't have made it to 27 weeks without my support. And that's the goal of working together. That's how I work with my clients is we don't know what's going to happen. Nobody does. Your doctor doesn't even know. 
but I help you do everything in your power so that no matter when your baby's born, you know you did everything you could to stay pregnant as long as possible. Whether that's 27 weeks or 42 weeks, there's no doubt in your mind, there's no what ifs, or there's no looking back with regret once that baby's born. Just because your doctor has lost hope doesn't mean there's nothing more that you can do, and that was Kim's story. And I want you to know, again, that no matter what's going on in your pregnancy, you could be at the very end of your pregnancy, according to your doctor, in the hospital, lying upside down. There is still hope during your high-risk pregnancy. The story of Allison that I'm going to share with you now is really cool because she's unlike any other client that I've worked with. When she contacted me at 19 weeks, there was actually nothing wrong with her pregnancy. Everything was going quite well, actually. She was already on bed rest at home because she was pregnant with twins and because she had experienced losses in the past. Her doctor just wanted to be a little more careful with her. So that's why she was on bed rest. But really, for the most part, everything was going quite well and quite smoothly. So... She contacted me because she wanted to know what she could do to prevent things from going wrong. Now, if you have followed me and you've listened to this podcast and you know a little bit about my philosophy, you know that that really speaks to my heart because prevention is exactly what we're going for here. And of course, I help women who are in the thick of it, absolutely, and that's typically uh, what happens with my clients, but Really, if we can get to it even before anything happens, that's that's when the sun shines and the light comes and that's really what we're aiming for. So she had been following me everywhere. She said she was following me on all my social media accounts and she was subscribed to my newsletter and she was soaking up everything I was saying. It was really cute. I felt like I was talking to a fan um, and she was super, super sweet. So she said you know, what do I do? What can I do that is going to help me stay pregnant as long as possible? So we talked a little bit about, well, you know, what's happening now that you need help with. And as with many, many, many of my clients, it came down to anxiety. And it came down to how can I stay as calm as possible Now, her anxiety wasn't very high or anything, but she knew that she was worried, of course, as any mom would be. So she wanted to know how to stay calm because she really bought into and really understood the importance of calmness on pregnancy health. So we that's what we worked on. And she was great because she was super open to trying a bunch of new things. She really understood the philosophy that I had that all these little things that we do every single day make a tremendous difference in the big picture. So in the moment, they seem really small and insignificant, but they really are quite, quite impactful. So with her, one of the things I worked on is setting up a relaxing environment. That was really important to her. She was one of those people that's very sensitive to her surroundings. So if there's a lot of clutter, there's a lot of mess, things are disorganized, that raises her anxiety a lot. And she knew that about herself. So it was very easy to go in and start working on that. So here's how we start with that, which is, you know, I asked her, what brings you that sense of peace and calm that you're looking for? And it took her a little bit, I'll be honest, to really get into the groove of it, to to get out of her head, get out of the reality that she's pregnant with twins on bed rest and to imagine feeling the optimal sense of peace and calm. So we did a little bit of work on that and what came out of it was, she said, oh, the ocean. I love being by the ocean because that just makes me feel really calm. To which of course I was like, me too. (laughs) I love being by the ocean. But okay, that's still not specific enough. What is it about the ocean that makes you feel calm? Is it the sand? Is it the sun? Is it being in the water? Is it hearing the water? What is that? So we really delved deep into figuring that out. And we found out for her, it was hearing water was very soothing to her. So the next 
question was, well, how can we surround you with water in a way that's going to elicit that calmness that you feel when you're by the ocean? Because if we could, we'd just have you sit by the ocean all the time, but we can't do that. So I remember talking to her and it her face just completely changed as soon as we figured this out. And she goes, oh, my friend keeps asking me about what she can bring over or to help. And I've never really known what to tell her. But what if she brings over a water fountain? And she was kind of half joking, half serious about it. And and so I went with that and I suggested to her, well, you know, they have these beautiful Japanese water fountains you can get at any store nearby. I think even Target might have them, Costco, or um, you can get them from Amazon. What about something like that? And then I could literally see the light bulb going off in her head. And she said, oh my gosh, that reminds me of this Japanese tea garden that my husband and I used to go to when we were dating where we used to live. And we loved that place because it was so serene and they had these beautiful little koi ponds and small waterfalls that are exactly that. So she loved the idea and she coordinated with her friend and they picked out a Japanese water fountain with those little ones you can put on a table or a nightstand or something. And she also had her husband pick up a bamboo plant and she set up her living room almost like a Japanese tea garden because it made her feel calm and it made her feel really at peace every time she turned on the water fountain or she looked over at the plants. She ended up on hospital bed rest anyway because she was having some contractions and now her doctor thought she could still manage them at home but being as proactive as she was, she thought it would make her feel better to be at the hospital, be around people who could help her and her babies. And so she acted as her own advocate and stood up for herself and said, no, I I really want to be admitted at this point. And they got her in, which was phenomenal that she just knew herself so well to, to know that that's what helped her. And so when she got into the hospital room, she set up the hospital room the exact same way. She didn't bring in the the water fountain, but she did bring her bamboo plant and she brought some pictures of her and her husband when they were at the ocean or they had pictures at the Japanese tea garden from years ago. And she surrounded herself with that in her hospital room to bring in the elements of what make her feel calm. It was amazing. And so while she was in the hospital, we still continue to work on her anxiety. Again, focusing on where it is in her body, figuring out her triggers, and helping her connect with that feeling of the ocean and the tea garden that brings her peace and how we can insert that into her everyday life so she can continue to recenter herself and bring her anxiety down. And it worked because her contraction stopped and her doctor discharged her. She still was on bed rest for a few more weeks at home, and then she got off bed rest at 35 weeks. And she was so excited. She emailed me. And then the the subject line for that email was, I'm free, (laughs) which I can really relate to. You know, bed rest really feels like jail sometimes. And so she, uh, she was celebrating and wanted to share that with me. I was so happy for her. And this woman with twins and preterm contractions delivered healthy babies at 37 and a half weeks. Can you believe it? Oh my goodness, and these babies were super cute too. The lesson here being, it's your pregnancy, your baby, and you are the best advocate for you and your babies. So you have to be proactive because the sooner you step up and say something, the sooner you get to take action to have a healthy pregnancy. Each and every woman is different. Each story is different. Each pregnancy is different. Each baby is different. But the thing that ties all of these stories together is that there's hope during a high-risk pregnancy. Shane Lopez, the author of Making Hope Happen, a wonderful book about hope, he writes... 
you might consider yourself a hard-nosed realist, even a pessimist, someone who sees the world in a clear, cold light, but you take action to improve any situation that's important to you. And that's exactly what hope is. Believing that the future can be and will be better, and then taking action to make that happen. That's exactly what all three of these women did, and that's exactly what you can do too. Thank you so much for joining me here today. I had such a blast sharing these stories with you, and I hope that you feel a sense of renewed hope to hearing these stories of these wonderful women who are going through exactly what you are going through right now. If you want to know more or if you want to schedule a consultation, you can visit my website at barijatdeshpande.com and I'd love to stay in touch with you also. So follow me on Twitter at barijatdesh or Instagram at barijatdesh. I know how hard it is to go through a pregnancy where there's so much uncertainty and sometimes when your doctor even loses hope before you're ready to do it too. But it doesn't mean that there is a predetermined way this pregnancy is going to play out. There is always hope during a high-risk pregnancy for you to stay pregnant and for you to bring home a healthy baby. Take it one day, one step at a time. You can do this.